beloveds. Yo, press one in the chat if y'all can hear me. Let me tell y'all what Phoenix silly ass did. I'm telling you, we could blame this shit on this OG Kush that I had. So we've been sitting here chopping it up, chopping it up, chopping it up for the last 15 minutes. I was two minutes late and I'm sitting here dialoguing with y'all in the chat and everything and I never started the show. I never uh, got Brother Damon <laughs> Brother Damon here and we've just been talking to ourselves thinking that we've been talking to y'all for the last 15 minutes. Uh, I think that's hilarious. Um, but thank you. Y'all here. Press one in the chat so I can make sure that we're actually recording this right now. How y'all beautiful ones doing? What's up, Seek of Truth? Hey, beloved sister. Yeah, so look, and now everybody's just piling it. We were going hard for 15 minutes here, and I never hit start broadcast. I looked down, um, and I maximized the screen, and I saw that people were waiting. And I'm like, why are they waiting? It should be, you know, the watching now. So that's my bad, beautiful ones. We've been sitting here chopping it up for 15 damn minutes, and Phoenix never started the broadcast. So this is your brain on that. OG Cali cut sometimes, okay? <laughs> so again, let me just introduce uh, our beloved guest, Brother Damon Taylor. Uh, like I was saying uh, before, you know, we actually started to record the broadcast. Um, Brother Damon, expert researcher, uh, he just has so much information, um, very helpful with the genealogy. Uh, he's got so much information on a lot of the towns that our ancestors occupied. I love you too, Base Gordy. Um, a lot of the towns that our families occupied, he's got the history on uh, a lot of the, um, you know, certainly the, the the name changes, the case systems, the color lines um, that they have, uh, you know, the, the identity theft, the hijack, you know, uh, he's got plenty of information on that. Um, so he did a wonderful piece on the Corbell settlement, uh, Corbell versus Salazar. And, uh, I'm going to let, turn the mic over to him. Um, and, and y'all show the brother some love, brother, you got to introduce yourself again for the people that never heard you when I didn't start the recording. <laughs> <laughs> not, a, not a problem. Hold on. Hold on. I'm trying to, cause I'm trying to get the chat up too. You can hear me guys, right? You guys yeah. can hear me? Okay. Yeah. I'm trying to get the chat up because is the chat coming up from the YouTube? Or... Yes, it'll be on the YouTube. It's it'll on the YouTube. Okay, so I gotta let me see. I gotta mute that joint, right? So I don't yeah. or echo. Okay, I got that going on. Okay, and I see the chat going on. All right, all right, we there. So we there. <laughs> um, okay, so like like I was saying before, um, you know, again, my name is Damon Taylor, and um, you know, I'm originally from um, Harlem, New York. That's where I grew up, um, born and raised. And currently I live in um, Darlington, South Carolina. Um, I guess I, I do want to give that background that I gave earlier, um, just so you guys can kind of understand what got me started um, really in this, in, this, um, in this endeavor to really find out more about who our people are, you know? Um, so like I was saying before, uh, you know, I was just, you know, Regular kind of how you would say everybody conscious and I was online doing what everybody else would do, um, trying to, you know, um, speak to the masses. And during the time of the Mike Brown um, shooting, when that went down, when he got murdered, I went and I um, had posted online. I posted an Omec head. And when I posted it, I posted it, you know, just to, you know, just give our people something else to look at, not to just only have to look at themselves as being victims in the street. It's another way to look. And when I did that, um, I got, I actually got harassed online. I got trolled for the first time. You know, I never really experienced that. And this person's coming on there telling me, oh, um, you know, you're never, you know, like you're never indigenous and, you know, like that's not you. And I'm like, you know, not even telling them, I'm not trying to claim that I'm Olmec or anything like that. I'm just, at the time, I was just trying to make the um, statement that these were the original people that had been here before, you know, Europeans and things of that nature. And I was still kind of more convinced of the narrative of the um, mass importation of um, 
of slaves from Africa. I was, you know, I was more convinced of that. So I was telling him, though, hey, you know, I, I know I have the American Indian background, but, um, you know, um, you know, but even if I have an African American, African background, you know, you can't deny me. But at the time, you know, I didn't have as much information as I even have now. Um, because of that in incident, though, as as much of as it was frustrating, I actually I'm actually happy that that happened because that allowed me to dig deeper. So I started to do that. Um, I, I got familiar with um, African Americans and African with Kerry Davis, um, who who's another person, Chris Jr. That's another person who really, really I used to really check out his information. Um, Johnny Aborigine, other people, um, you know, I might leave some names out, but it's a lot, it's a lot of y'all that um I was inspired by. Um, Sha Davis, that's another one. Um, different people inspired me. And I would just, you know, dig deeper in the information. And ultimately I got to, to find out so many truths about um who we are, and also got to see through a lot of the lies um about who people say that we are. Um Again, that's that's kind of basically part of the background of how I got to where I'm at now. Um, I guess you know. We, again, we could go from we could start going from there. Okay, well, I'm so glad we're actually recording now. We lost a good twenty minutes. <laughs> twenty minutes. Um, I'm glad you're here, Aboriginal Indigenous Media. I'm glad you made it, beloved. Great to see you. Um, so yeah, you know, it's pretty much the same thing as 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 many of us. You know, we kind of drifted off away from grandma for a period of time, away <laughs> from what our family oral histories have indicated uh, or notified us of our ancestry. We kind of, you know, we went other places searching for other things, and now we're back. You know, so this is this is wonderful. Um, uh aboriginal lone wolf you text me a good time i'll start doing some things in the daytime whatever time is better um i'm looking to uh, ultimately have uh, two two things going on uh per day that's that's what we're going to be leading up to uh eventually but i'm so glad you're here right now and worst case scenario you'll always be able to play it back um so yeah you know We've all been through different schools of thoughts and, and all kinds of things, but the righteous thing is to get back to the family. That's it. The righteous okay. thing is to get back to the family. Um, once you do that and you start disconnecting from the ideology of a colonized mind, a lot of things are just going to start falling away. And and that's, that's what it's about. We just got to strengthen up to take back what's ours. They can't hand it over to us because a lot of people are not ready. We have to admit that... There's, as a whole, we're just we're just not quite ready yet, and mm -hmm. we don't want the responsibility. That's their responsibility. That's the deal that we made. They're supposed to be working for us, and we're supposed to be able to, you know, delegate responsibilities and chores mm -hmm. and tasks. Mm -hmm. And we have neglected to do that. We have opted to be told what to do instead of mm -hmm. telling, you know, our employees what we would like to be, you know, what, what, what we would like to have done. So a lot of these things um, in the near future, especially with us, you know, trying to establish a political party, why it is very important to have things uh, that are meaningful to us, you know, presented to some of these parties. Um, for instance, um, you know, just certain things you need in your neighborhood, a group of people with this 2020 census coming up. 50 people, 50 family members uh, within a certain, I think a hundred or 150 mile radius will be listed as a nation. Well, guess what? There will be funds that will have to be allocated for your particular nation, not the federally recognized Choctaws or the mm -hmm. federally recognized uh, uh, Chippewas or what have you, your nation, the ones that they forgot that are now gonna go back on record for the record and they'll be there forever, long after we're gone. So mm -hmm. these are some of the things we have to start getting comfortable. Uh, did a show yesterday with um, Aboriginal Mac. And you know, he talked. We talked about having relationships with the sheriff's department and the police department, and how important and stuff that is. Well, um, there were some people that completely disagreed. But once you realize that they work for you, there's nothing that should be undesirable about establishing a relationship 
uh, with someone that would potentially could ruin your life. One hmm. traffic stop could fuck your whole life up. Right. So now if you have made them aware, they don't have the right to assume anymore. That lessens their uh, diminishes what power or authority that some people already seem to think that they have over you. So, um, again, we there's some things that we're going to have to do differently in order to get different results. I don't know about y'all, but I am tired of seeing our people get bust upside the head like mm -hmm. a damn pinata. You see? Right. Uh, and they don't even get to grab the goddamn candy when the when the pinata's busted open. You don't get the candy, right? Mm -hmm. The aggressor usually gets the goddamn candy. They get the treat. So, um, you know, just gotta get stop. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. What uh, a lot of these people, namely the oppressors, start heading out, heading at them before they head at you. They already looking to fuck your life up. You have to stop them, you know, make them come to a screeching halt by presenting yourself. Even after um, you read all these wars and they, they made a declaration of independence, they had to declare their freedom. It wasn't just that they just said, hey, we're free from England and we're not going to do this and not going to do that. It had to be a declaration and it had to be mutual consent of, amongst a, a specific group of people that had the same ideas, the same wants, desires, needs, and ideologies. And that's right. the same thing that we have to do. It's happening globally. It's happening globally. So these are some of the things that we're going to have to participate in. We've left it up to other people to decide things for us, much against our chagrin. We've left it up to other people to uh, throw us the crumbs when the whole goddamn cake and cookie is ours. So <laughs> We just want to make sure that we 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 getting out of those habits and start exploring different avenues in order to get different results. Because if you keep doing things the same way, you already know what's behind that door. You know. <laughs> so true. So true. So yeah, brother. Um, back to the Corbell settlement. Um, if you were able, would be so kind as to to go back over that so the people can see what that settlement was about. And again, okay. even even in this settlement, you see where we were still shortchanged and the Native yep. Americans still put into the kick ass for the American yes. Indian. Yes. Yeah, but but that's exactly what, that's what I was about to say. You, what you said, what you had just said is a perfect lead into exactly what, what happened in that case, because by far uh, we got the short end of the stick. And, you know, the caveat is, um, like I said, when I when I when I read it, when I read through this, the caveat the caveat is at the end to show that oftentimes you will have the the people that look like you that can tend to kind of not work in your best interest. That's how that's how I, I that's how I received what I what I read here. Okay, so um, <clears throat> I'm gonna go through it again. Can everybody see it? Everybody can see it on the screen. Yes. Okay. No problem. Um. So. Again, this is um this is the actual op-ed. This is from John W. Boyd Jr., the president of the Black Farmers Association. It's actually this guy right here. See him shaking hands with Obama, right? Um, he's down here with his father, I believe, um, and a couple more pictures. But I, I want to get into what he actually wrote in this op-ed. Okay. Um, so this week more than 400,000 Native Americans from numerous tribal groups will receive $1,000 checks just in time for Christmas. These court ordered payments from the federal government will begin to settle a landmark $3.4 billion class action lawsuit. The suit Cobell versus Salazar was one of the largest class actions ever filed against the United States. It charged that as far back as the 1880s, the government mismanaged money owed to Native Americans. Okay, again, with quotes. <clears throat> so don't get caught up on the words. We know what, you know, what they really, who they really were paying that money to. Um, these trust funds were collected from farming and grazing leases, timber sales, mining and oil and gas production from land owned by American Indians and Alaska Natives. Sadly, Eloise Cobell, a member of the Montana Blackfeet, who was the lead plaintiff in the 1996 lawsuit, will not be among those receiving the checks. She died last year of cancer-related complications before ever seeing the fruits of her labors. In fact, 
the settlement was prompted by recognition that large numbers of the affected Native Americans live in poverty and many are elderly and dying. The Native Americans case had many similarities to our decade long battle to claim justice for millions of black farmers who had been wronged in the denial of farm loans and other federal mishandling. It is as complicated as the black farmers $1.25 billion settlement um, both cases required an act of Congress to fund the court settlement, and they were intertwined. I spent eight years lobbying for the Black Farmers Bill, which passed in the 2008 Farm Bill. By then, I had endured a grueling draining process I would not wish on anyone. I thought my Capitol Hill ordeal was over. Boy, was I wrong. This time of year was the most difficult for me. Most people would be in good holiday spirits. I would be heading home empty handed, facing another year with a stalled bill pending in Congress. Our settlement with the Obama administration required congressional approval. So I had to go back to Congress for the funding. During that time, Democrats had a supermajority in the House and the bill passed there. But the Senate was a whole other ball of wax. The Democrats had a, had, pardon me, had a narrow majority there. Uh, in 2009, the Obama administration coupled the black farmers suit and the Cobell settlement together, handing me a massive battle to wage for $4.5 um, billion, a much harder sell on Capitol Hill. I quickly had to become an expert on the Cobell case. We picked up opposition from re Republican senators who wanted to reduce legal fees for the Cobell attorneys. The combined bill failed as a standalone act 11 times in the Senate. I spent months at a time on the Hill, dressed in coveralls, day in and day out, visiting members who opposed the Black farmers and Native Americans' proposed settlement. I practically parked my tractor named Justice, which I had driven from my Virginia farm to Washington to highlight the failed congressional actions. Finally, two years after the farm bill passed, Congress passed the legislation that included 3.4 billion for Native Americans, 1.25 billion for black farmers, and additional funding for a water line on Indian reservations. That December 8th, um, President Obama, pardon me, that December 8th, President Obama signed the landmark bill into law. Now with the Cobell case, settlement and payments underway, at least partial justice will begin for people who are members of most federally recognized tribes west of the Mississippi River. At least some of the resources will be restored to those who claimed government wrongs, including mismanaging trust funds and assets, improper, improperly accounting for those funds, and mismanaging trust land and settlement, and, pardon me, and assets. I can attest that settlements are never perfect. It's a give and take process. My father would always say a half of a loaf is better than none at all. At least you can eat and feed your family. I am proud of my time spent helping to bring justice to Native Americans. My father was native, has Native blood and ties to a small tribe called the Saponi people. Um, Saponi people, pardon me. Um, helping to bring justice and vindication to hundreds and hundreds of thousands of Native Americans made the struggle all worth it. Um, I worked long and hard on getting the bill passed in Congress, and it brings me personal joy to know that deserving individuals will be receiving checks this week. Okay, and this is John W. Boyd, Jr., president of Black Farmers Association who again, I find it interesting that at the end, he mentions that he has native blood <laughs> um, on his father's side. Um, and he still seems to wanna, or well, he has to position himself juxtaposed to other native Americans that he claims that he is, you know? This is, to me, this is right here is a big, um, how can I say, it's, it's, it's like the whole problem in a nutshell right here, you know? Like everything that we deal with to me is, is, is encapsulated 
in this um in this write up that he did because I look at it and I feel like okay the federal government is being is be, is being brought to suit for mismanagement of these trusts since the 1880s um who were the names on these trusts we don't know right because it's mismanaged how much money did they receive we don't know because it was mismanaged all of these things were going on in the 1880s okay this is following reconstruction um you know um later on i, I want to definitely touch on the laws especially in virginia where he's from um that were established in virginia um but because of all of these things that were going on the mismanagement the fraud then to add to that the jim crow the um the different racial integrity <laughs> act of course you know that we haven't even got to yet but all of these things going on to marginalize the what he considers himself a so-called black farmer um yet when again if i look through these pictures here you know you see him here but then you see this woman who is proudly represented as you know she's represented as american indian right and she's able to now reap a benefit right um how is she different than him <laughs> in what way i don't see it you know i don't understand it and of course lineage is one thing but he already said for out of his own you know his own statement that he has native blood you know with quotes on it you know, i don't i don't really like those terms but just because he's using that term that shows something in itself um but i mean i guess I kind of want to digress. I guess we kind of could build off of that or hear your thoughts on it, you know, because that's that's kind of where I stand on it from the from the get, you know. Yeah, well, you know, you know, we don't really care for that particular dialogue, but that's you know, that's how some people talk. It's hard for them to shake. They're not uh familiar with the word semantics and they kind of yeah. just grab on to grab a hold on to whatever it is that that they can find um, you know, useful to them. Yes. Yeah. Whether or not, you know, how they assign themselves, um, you know, ultimately it, it has been a problem how they assign themselves, but what, it's still always going to be a personal choice. Like there are plenty of people now um, that have all this information and they have still opted to be federally recognized and, and that's mm -hmm. their prerogative to, you know, mm -hmm. they to go and get in where they fit in. Mm -hmm. um, that's not an option for me. Um, that's not, um, anything that I am interested in. I would certainly appreciate being acknowledged over recognized. Um, I don't want to jump out of one pan and into another fire, um, you know, just to be comfortable, uh, expressing my culture and my heritage and, and my ancestry. Nobody mm -hmm. else has to jump through no goddamn wings of fire to be who the hell they are. Mm -hmm. I don't know the point is that I have to do the same thing uh, to do any of that in my own country, in my own land, you know, um, and it's been, it's never been a matter of me feeling empowered or, or superior by telling people who they are. It's always been me having to defend who I am, mm -hmm. in which case exposes who I am not. And that <laughs> seems to be a huge fucking problem. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking problem. A lot of people um, are triggered by the smallest things. And I, I, I always have to point out the genocide. I have uh, one beloved friend. I'm telling you, I've known this dude since we had no furniture in our mouth. You know, when you lose your first front teeth in like the first grade of <laughs> yeah, shit, like, <laughs> um, And, uh, you know, so I, I did a post today on Facebook and and he jumped all over it. And I was, and the post was regarding people changing their last names and how your last name, um, you know, is a part of your legacy. And people mm -hmm. are under the impression that, oh, these are slave names. Um, those names don't mean any good and blah. And I'm like, okay, we'll prove that. You still got to prove that. If that's what you feel um, your last names are a part of. Or, or if that's what they remind you of or they're reminiscent of that, then prove it. You should be able to prove uh, where you got that slave master name from. True indeed. Right? So in, in that instance, if that is somebody else's <laughs> cup of tea, then that's okay. That's their business and I'm, I have no problem with that. Um, you know, but for the, the advice that I gave regarding not changing the last names and outcomes, uh, 
my homeboy that I've known, we're 44. So I've known this dude for about 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> And mm -hmm. hopping fucking mad that uh, you know, I never had a dashiki. Let's just fucking make that shit clear. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? I never had a fucking dashiki. I never went and you know called myself no staunch pan African. Now I was pro black. I definitely mm -hmm. look at our people as 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 the end all be all, the beginning and the end, the alpha mm -hmm. and the omega. I've always thought of it that way. So I've always had that sense of pride. I've always been comfortable in my skin with my complexion. Um, and my family varies from every different shade of brown. My grandma was mm -hmm. light, wet bone, my granddaddy chocolate, uh, you know. So I, I, we never dealt with those with the colorism in the family. In yeah. fact, I would say that the lighter family members made sure that we never felt neglected, rejected, or not as valid as they were, yeah. if Ever. I can be honest, you know. Um, but yeah, the brother pretty much just fucking snapped on me. like and. Nowhere in the post was there anything about American Aboriginal. And he, you know, came on there doing a, the Pan-African bully dance. That's what I call them. <laughs> the Pan-African bully war dance. It's the way that they get with their words and shit like that, where they want to just attack people on the post that don't subscribe to that goddamn ideology. And 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 it's like a the last name was like a fucking trigger. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, whatever floats your boat and tickles your pickle, but you can't come over here. Telling people what they need to subscribe to because Jock, Dr. John Henry Clark said so, or because you know the institutionalized learning has promoted this, these you know this bullshit fallacies to us. Yeah. Um, so I basically explain that the names represent our ancestral forefathers and foremothers, companies, locations, uh, occupations, um, basic accounts of their historical commercial affairs, and the ability to be remembered. Remember your ancestors by who they are, not what strangers tell you. You know, not one of your teachers or professors should be able to speak for your folks personally unless you're related to them. So mm -hmm. my suggestion, you know, was that people hold on to those names. That is how, um, you know, you, you, you deal with your descendancy. And, of course, you know, we got the angry Pan-African that brought up... Um, you know, that, that I was reaching, never got uh, into what he said that I was reaching about, but you know, he brought up American Aborigine and nowhere <laughs> did it say that. So this is how you know when people are triggered. You, This is how you can tell when people are biased with what you yeah. understand yourself to be. I've never seen anything like it, never. Um, so when people say shit like black people can't be racist, that's bullshit. You see how they act? <laughs> The American Aboriginal, yeah, that they <laughs> take part of foreigners and Native Americans versus the brothers and sisters that been calling motherfuckers booty, booty scratches since since the beginning of time. So you know, again, it's not. It's a matter of of your 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 um, take on self determination. Certainly not allowing anyone to determine who you are or who you say you are. So I'm just telling y'all to stand your ground because once they can't do anything with the facts, then all they're going to do is start with the torts. You know what I'm saying? They'll mm -hmm. find reason. Oh, your hair's nappy. Oh, you got a weave. Oh, you sure look like an African to me. You know, they, that's all that they can deal with. They can't deal with the facts. They can't deal with the, the records, um, especially uh, the, the intricate findings that we have we we mm -hmm. go really deep searching for ourselves so some of these documents and and things that we pull out from the crates a lot of them are not familiar with it so it bothers yeah. the fuck out of them i really don't thank you so much joe i really don't know how the american indian and us um you know sullies or 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 minimizes the african and some of these people that are so fucking upset with who our grandmother is <laughs> I just think that's crazy. Part of it is that they they really don't have any attachment to that African. Um, it's it's just like a fantasy for them. So because we're like bursting that bubble, you know, that kind of I think in, in my opinion it make puts them in an insecure place. You know what I'm saying? Because they might not have the information that they um that they need to be able to connect with their American Indian um indigenous American. Um, background, but be because they're comfortable by identifying as as an African descendant without proof, by the time we bust their bubble and make them have to rethink that, 
you know, that, that leads them to a certain level of insecurity. And to me, it's only an insecure person or uninformed or ignorant, you know, and I'm not trying to be judgmental, you know what I'm saying? But it's one of those often that has to be the case, I believe, that's going to make you just um, get so vitriol vitriolic at information. This is just information that, again, like you said, these other people haven't even taken the time to research on their own, you know? Like, I want to I add on to what you mentioned about the surnames. Um, I, I can attest, for example, like a, like a surname like Taylor, right? And I was looking in um, a census. I, I wish I could remember exactly what year it was. I want to say it had to be in maybe like 1860, maybe 1870. It was one of those. Um, I want to say it was maybe 1870. Um, and it had numbers of us, um, you know, numbers of, you know, what they were what they were labeling as black people in the census. They had numbers of them labeled in there and they had their occupation as um, this was in Charleston, so it was in Charleston, if I recall. And it had the occupation as Taylor, right? But it was spelled T-A-Y-L-O-R. And it was spelled like that. It was spelled like Taylor, and that was their occupation. So um, for people to discount what you're saying, they just obviously haven't done enough of the work for their own selves, you know? Right, right. And I think that that fucking disturbs them too. The fact that we have been able to penetrate so many layers to this ancestry and genealogy, and we and we're never gonna run out of ancestors to discover. Yeah. Thank you, Sonny Badger, y'all, Koke, beloved. Do y'all realize that this is going to be a lifetime thing? So for someone that just started doing their family tree at forty-four, guess what your hobby or your project is gonna be until you fade to black. This is something that's never going to stop. So it's always going to be, um, it, it would be conducive for or proactive for you to teach one of the younger people in your family how to, to go forward, right? So it doesn't stop because yep. when you die off, when you die off, there's still going to be a bunch of branches uh, and leaves that you have not been able to touch on or expound on, right? So now when you have it and wherever you leave off, now you have the youngin coming to make sure that this shit don't never die. That is immortality, ladies and gentlemen. Indeed. That is how you live forever, mm -hmm. you see? Mm -hmm. That's how you live forever. So part of, um, you know, part of our neglect in doing so it has a lot to do with why we are here now, you know? So now we are just, you know, stuck trying to, um, you know, trying to debrief ourselves from these programs that have been more than, 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 than detrimental to our well being. Now we're here at this point where we're shaking off a lot of this shit and it's going to be like second nature. So the beauty of this is, our children, uh, well, for those that have the young children still, uh, and our grandchildren, they'll never be in a world where they're unable or uh, to make a determination as to who they are. They will never live in a world where someone gets to tell them that their history started in 1619. They was happily swinging from jungle vines and the big white man came uh, and captured their asses and brought them here and they worked for free. <laughs> and throw their fucking whole entire legacy, history, and ancestry in a box, yeah. never to be opened again. And now here it is, we have fucking cracked open Pandora's box, and now when you deal with these agencies on a mass scale, you know, they say shit like, well, we knew this day was coming, <laughs> right? Yeah. We knew this day was coming. This is the conversations that we're having uh, with these, these so-called oppressors, right? But we can't have those conversations with the Pan-Africans or the, the, the $5 Native Americans. They don't want to have those type of conversations. They would just rather us not exist. And they would just rather us, you know, go back into our little uh, fight the power, proud to be black, oh, right? So, but we got work to do, I think. And I, I just want to tell some of y'all, y'all are not the same Indian you was a year ago. I think it's wonderful what y'all doing. Everybody is coming into their own, um, into their own strengths. And this is exactly what we're gonna need to build. This is exactly what we're gonna need. You got some brothers that are really strong on the anthropology, um, you know, such as Aboriginal power. They're really good with the anthropology. That's their area. That's where he's strong at. We need to figure out ways that we can help 
expound on those things to strengthen that up because we have neglected those things. Those yeah. are controlled sciences that we have not been interested in entertaining. Mm -hmm. And now we have to rely on what it is that they're hiding from us <laughs> right, to determine uh, how legitimate the legitimacy of our claims. That's crazy. Yeah. We're yeah. not supposed to be putting people in a position um, where we don't have enough control over what is said, how is said, um, and then we certainly can't even have, we don't have any control over what it is that they don't say about the American findings that they have here through uh, uh, paleontology and, and anthropology. Yeah. So these are some of the areas that we have to get in. We also have to get back into our trades. You don't have to be so versed in law um, as maybe I am, but I'm not a mechanic. I can't build things. You can build things. Let me help you, uh, and, uh, you know, expand on your business in building so I can come to you for the services. I don't want to go to nobody else. Yeah. I don't want to chip you. I'm not going to pay Mr. White Mechanic $50 an hour for labor on my car and then come to you with a sob story like, well, look, brother, I only got 25. <laughs> we got to stop doing that shit. That's, that's very true. Nobody white people with a fucking excuse for why they can't pay this or pay that. You're not going in the Gucci store telling them you only got $750 and you want that $2,500 belt. It's not mm -hmm. fair that you do it to your own people either. Mm -hmm. It's not yeah. fair. It's actually disgusting and repulsive. Indeed. That's the that's so. the that's the real truth. Cause you know we if we don't start to um to to make commerce with each other um, we're we're gonna be it's gonna be perpetual. The what we're the cycle we're in is definitely gonna be perpetual. You know what I mean? The commerce, right. the commerce is definitely um a key. You know what I mean? Um, they the 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 powers that be. I'll use that term. A lot of people can just sum it up. They're very aware of that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're very aware. That's right. That's right. So and they're looking. They're anxious to see exactly what it is that we're gonna do. Uh, when the spotlight is on us. Man, listen, we're going to take those 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 five minutes and we're going to make it count. It's got to be legendary. I'm talking fucking Hollywood Walk of Fame legendary, mm -hmm. right? Once it's time for us to grab the mic, everybody's going to know we're going to have the right story. This is why a lot of people are afraid of some of the things that we're talking about because it proves how much shit they didn't know what the fuck they were talking about when they act like they was coming to the rescue of so-called black people. It's mm -hmm. bullshit. It's pathetic that you never hear in any of those hidden color movies by Tariq Nasheed. Never fucking once did they talk about misclassified uh, people, Indians being uh, labeled as Negro uh, colored mulatto. They don't talk about that shit. They, they try to confuse the Native Americans with the actual American Indians and just, you know, um, still elaborate on the fact that Native Americans own slaves. They never give you the backstory. Uh, let's say that um, they were after my uncles for some reason, and my grandmother had to make sure she controlled all of our straws, right? Mm -hmm. Not only did she have to uh, uh, have documentation indicating that my uncles were her slaves, but also his offspring and some of her grandchildren so that they could not be taken into... Um, you know, subjugation by anybody else. Mm -hmm. They never give those type of backstories with those real instances, those tangible proof instances that we are able to embark on uh, and expound on to state our case. So it's a lot of things that they tell and there's more things that they don't tell. So how helpful or conducive has that been to this particular group of so-called black people that pretend to be awoke? <laughs> They're not... They what what bothers me is that the information that's available, you know, it's it's it, there are some things that you know you might have to, you know, there's some things that you know I, I might have had to order a book that's not you know available, and you know I had to find it at a used bookstore, maybe at a um, library sale. Okay, but there's a lot of information that it's just I, I, it's like at, at it's at your fingertips, you know. I literally I just type in things in the screen and I find the information. It's there. You know what I'm saying? So because it's there, that's what really lets you know that it has to be more of a conspiracy to keep it hidden from you or to right. suppress it or to suppress right. it. Because um, these these individuals, and again, this is how you mentioned, there, there are many that take that Pan-African stance that, that are very entrenched, most of them because of commerce for themselves, because they're making too much money off of a narrative. 
They don't want to lose any of that. But I, I also have a number of people that um, are close friends of mine, actually personal friends of mine, who were very deep in that narrative. Um, very, you know, like before, a lot of the people that you see on the scene, they were like heavy, heavy into that, into the, um, you know, the comedic scene and things of that nature. And numbers of them, like, you know, like they, they, they still have names that are comedic and everything. And they, some of these individuals have really, really um, responded to the information that I've been putting out and others. And now they're coming around. And so, so it, it does work both ways. You know what I'm saying? You do have these people that they, they're very much working for their own interests, but then you have some people who honestly are looking for answers. And um, even some people that's right in the middle of that. And, um, you know, I think that's why our dialogues are always helpful. You know, I've had some people, um, I was on a post with, um, with the brother Miko Nico, um, and he could attest that, um, actually, you, you actually you know exactly who I'm talking about. This this guy John Phoenix, at least that's one of the avatars he goes up goes under. Yeah. And, he, and he was on there on a post trying to tell um, the brother uh, Miko that he that this that the information that he was sharing, like what's the use of it? Like it's useless. Right. So I'm like, if it's useless, why are you even commenting on it? First of all, like it must have some effect. It must do something to you because it makes you want to want to continually comment on this thread about it but also um it's obvious that you just want to try to shut us up because we're we're speaking to people and we're making noise and you know people people are, there's a lot of interest out there that would like to keep us silent but you know this ain't look as long as i breathe it won't be me <laughs> you know what i'm saying so it just won't be me you know you know i know there's a lot of other people that feel the same way that's right. And these, these are the things we're supposed to be talking about. I mean, we could be all up in Offset and, and Cardi B's fucking business, but shit, mm -hmm. that has not benefited us when we are mm -hmm. neglecting grandma's business, when we're neglecting our parents' business, we're neglecting our children's business. Mm -hmm. And the, all of that directly ties into how everybody's handled. How are you handling your business is going to depend greatly on how you are handling things or being handled. That's mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. That's it. You know, uh, and we got to take a lot, take responsibility um, with these things. Yeah, you're Sean walking bear. Listen, he said um, <laughs> social media has backfired on their ass. And that is mm -hmm. absolutely true. And this is where we have been able to give some of our top Academy Award winning performances a fucking truth. Nonfiction. Mm -hmm straight up in your face and it's there presented for the world to see and the particularly uh was particularly um funny about it to me is the fact that we're using their material that we did not make this shit up this is not our opinions this is actual documented facts that we have been looking through documents after documents decades centuries after centuries worth of fucking documents on what they wrote about us this is not our personal opinion. Like one day out of the blue, uh, Kerry Davis decided to just start some fucking wave. No, he opened up a portal in our minds for us to walk through and think a little differently, right? Yeah. So these are some of the things that they would like to extinguish, but it's never gonna go away. Now that y'all fire is lit, who could put this shit out? It's never gonna happen. It's never gonna happen. No one is going back to the so-called dark ages, right? It's never gonna fucking happen again. You gotta feel good about not being able to be boxed in any longer, any further. It's gotta be a, a gratifying feeling for you. That right. should make you be secure knowing that there's going to be a W, there's going to be a consistent road of Ws from here on out. No more losses, no more losses. That's got to make you feel good. You may not have all of the genealogical ancestors uh, that you have liked to find at this point. That's fine. But you got all the information you need to make sure that you can still hold these motherfuckers off at the gate just with the basic understanding that you have. Even if you don't have all the tangible proof. And I keep telling y'all, they're not going to be able to tell you who you are. So they damn sure can't tell you who you're not. Make your declaration and stick to that. That's Thanks. The burden of proof is on them anyway. That's what people, first of all, don't understand that the burden of proof is on, um, is on these 
the states and these governments, they have to prove that you're not, you know what I'm saying? Because okay. you, you, don't, you don't have to run around doing that, you know, and this goes back to the Negro, um, the Negro Act of 1740, you know what I'm saying? You just read right in the act and it tells you that, that essentially that, um, first of all, it, it, that, that act is, in itself was used to subjugate all, um, all in Indians that were in am, um, that were not in Amity with the um, with the South Carolina government. Well, with the um, at that time wasn't even South Carolina government with the um, with the colony actually right. with uh, with England. So because it took all those uh, the, all of those um, indigenous people and subjugated them, that in itself kind of kills the need or the narrative that they needed to get all these other people to come in and be and be um to go to another place to get slaves that could work that land you know um there's this is that that narrative is flawed but the thing is that in in that it also mentioned that you have that that the court that you have to go to court and the court would have to prove that you were um that actually part of me that if you had an Indian mother that sh they had to prove that she was a slave. So again, because if you have none of this going on, you, you didn't go to court, you didn't find a record, a document, anything else you're saying is just um it, it's just fiction, really, you know what I'm saying? And and you're basically defaming yourself, <laughs> you know, unnecessarily, you know what I'm saying? Because there's no need for you to do that. You know, but a lot of this really ultimately comes out of um, propaganda. So I mean, I I wanted to address um, address address this law on the screen, which a lot of people are probably familiar with. But I mean, that'll probably also address why um, pardon me, why we're so why we're so confused about identity to begin with. You know, so um. Could, would you mind if I, you know, if I just go off into that, read, read, read off into the, um, the first, the first I line of the act right here? Well, the, floor, the floor is yours. All right. All right. Um, well, this act, this is, I know it might be hard to read here, um, but I'm just going to really read the first line. This is chapter 17, an act to amend, um, and I think it says reenact the uh, ninth section of chapter i can't read that number of the code of virginia essentially though this is just a code that's trying to define um mulattoes colored people um and this is like the first law that gave like a quantifiable definition of an american indian okay now again this is not us defining ourselves but this is this is the um, Virginia Assembly who has their own interest <laughs> trying to define what an American Indian is, okay? So this first line, be, be it enacted by the General Assembly that every person having one-fourth or more of Negro blood shall be deemed a colored person, and every person not a colored person having one-fourth or more of Indian blood shall be deemed an Indian, okay? And this is in Virginia, okay? This is 1866. So if this is the case, right, in 1866, what metric do they even have? Remember, this, they have a burden of proof. What metric do they have to define that a person has one-fourth or more of Negro, Negro blood? What's the metric to determine that somebody has one fourth or more of Indian blood. Okay. Um, also, if you notice, it doesn't even speak about white people. <laughs> okay. This, this first law, it said this first um, line. So again, it's talking about every person. Okay. Then every other person, right? Every person, not a colored person. Right. Um, <laughs> it's like, that's so vague, you know? Um, but then it's going to tell you that they only have to have one fourth of blood. So again, they just found a way to marginalize, to um, and to eliminate 
our, our us as the people in our lineages. So they can go and say, now you're a person who they deem to be a colored person or a Negro, but you might have that, like they said, one fourth of Negro blood, however they can determine that, and three fourths of quote unquote Indian blood, but you're not Indian. Yet these other people, <laughs> right, who they haven't really clearly defined, who apparently now we're calling Indians, they can only have one fourth of Indian blood, whatever that is again, <laughs> and now be deemed as Indian. So, you know, like this is going on in 1866 and then this led into so many other laws that followed. Um, you dealt with the entire Jim Crow, you dealt with all of the terrorism that was running people out of their towns. Um, you know, my I have ancestors that are coming from Brunswick, Virginia, the, um, they were living in Lunenburg as well, um, and eventually wound up moving to um, the Buckingham, Buckingham County, and then a large number of them moving up north to um, some to New York, some to Massachusetts, um, Alterboro, Northboro area um, is actually like um, that's like very, very heavy Algonquin area, Nip Nipmucks. Uh, um, from the from that area in particular so um you know it's just interesting that you would have what was going on and uh, on those records those ancestors are being listed as mulatto now again that term mulatto you know everybody's so quick to take that term and and they have a, a idea of what that looks like in your head right but if you take this individual well not not these individuals right there but um give me one second let me let me make this smaller. I'm gonna show you a person who in in um pardon me in South Carolina they were identified as a mulatto. How can I close this? There we go. Okay, so this man right here. Come on. All right. Okay, this man right here, Robert Smalls. Okay, I've looked at his records and he's listed as a mulatto. Okay, so again, you have many people who would say, Oh no, how is he mulatto? Um, what about his features would make him be a mulatto, right? Again, I, I'm not really speaking on whether he is or not a mulatto, what I'm speaking on is the um, the inconsistency of these terms and also the reason that these terms are being applied. You know, it's anything that they can apply that will negate us being the indigenous people of this land. That's ultimately the goal. Um, and you can see it. You know what I mean? You can see it when you see a law like that, that um, is basically telling you, well, it's okay if a person is, quote unquote, white and they have one fourth of, you know, this Indian blood, they can claim these benefits. But another person, even if they have more <laughs> of this Indian blood, they can't be entitled to these benefits. And this is codified in law. Um, it shows how many things and how many factors are working against us. You know, That's why it's important for people to know who they are and not let somebody else determine that for them. That's interesting. They... Um... I'm looking in the chat, and um, yeah, uh, I'm seeing um, P.O. Minko. I, I definitely know exactly what you mean. Um, a lot of my ancestors were um, born mulatto, but by the time they checked out, they were uh, colored on their death certificates yeah. or Negro. I noticed too. that they made most of the men Negro. And if you um, yeah. Look yeah. at how they had to also blacken a lot of the men in the household, and the reason why they did that was to restrict their from uh, their rights to vote to suffrage, especially in North Carolina. I don't think people uh, understand that in North Carolina, the <coughs> so-called Negro or Indian was able to vote up until about 1825, 1830. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of. Um, things that you know uh people were able to acquire and accomplish in north carolina that they couldn't do in virginia henceforth 
the back and forth over the the, the state lines, mm -hmm. Wake County, Warren County, um, uh, to Mecklenburg, Virginia, right? All of those border states, all of those border counties, uh, back and forth between uh, Virginia, uh, excuse me, North Carolina, Virginia, and Tennessee. And a lot of it was based off of having more political power or prowess in North Carolina than they did in Virginia. Yeah. So. What's interesting is too, like, you know, a lot of people did when they deal with, um, you know, going West and things of that nature, they don't even realize that <clears throat> a lot of those towns that you mentioned would be considered that as well, you know, like they 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 automatically assume that West like 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 it's like you know you get this narrative so West automatically means West of the Mississippi, and in in the initial, it wasn't that wasn't the case, and in 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 a number of states that wasn't the case because they hadn't even the settlers who came they hadn't even made inroads as far into these um places until like the 1850s and times like that you know what i'm saying so you know like you had like a whole nother it's like different waves of people moving and what we would call this western migration you know what i'm saying so a lot of towns like like a place like lunenburg you mentioned mecklenburg um these places were like on the frontier you know what i'm saying and if you have ancestors that were living here i mean for you to believe that it was likely that they were transported from africa to here then trudged through the through the dense forest <laughs> to get settled there i don't even understand how that makes logical commercial sense you know what i'm saying like that makes no sense it's, it's it, these individuals that we're dealing with one thing we can say about them is that they do know how to um how to deal with economics and that would not be economically sound so it's very unlikely that that was the case you know, very unlike. I do know that, you know, like I said, I see a lot of us have, have come a long way. If you go back into a lot of the things that even in uh, your memories, like from social media, you look at uh, the person you was two or three years ago uh, versus who you are now, what you've done now. I hope y'all see that as an accomplishment and not as a failure. Um, you know, that, that in itself, just being able to go back and pay homage to the ancestors, that's what we are supposed to be doing. And these are some of the things that were, um, neglected in the past. So again, I can't stress it enough. Be thankful and show gratitude. Got to show some gratitude for the things that you have, um, been able to ac acquire and accomplish for yourself since you've been able to to grow out of those you know misdirected ideologies that a lot of us were attached to so i just want to make sure that y'all giving yourself a little pat on the back too a lot of people get down in themselves i get inundated with emails um you know just you know a lot of people not uh feeling like they're doing enough but i want you to know that you're doing exactly what it is you're thinking for yourself that is everything that needs to be done that is 90 percent of what the battle uphill is going to be before it gets smooth so yeah. i just want y'all to know that uh, i think y'all doing a fantastic job uh and don't give up this is just we're just getting warm now this is not even the tip of the iceberg um and and it's only going to grow we just got to make sure that our collective stays tight we stay sucker free for one. Gotta stay sucker free, right? Get them mm -hmm. leeches from out the way. Indeed. And the rabble rousers, you know, they they interested in in um, dividing, um, deception, display, and dishonor. Those are some of the things that they're interested in. So that means we're not all the same. We have a different agenda. We have a completely different agenda, and it's based off of truth, law, and righteousness. And exactly what it is that we're supposed to have what belongs to us don't let nobody make you feel like you don't deserve some shit. that's not true <laughs> that's not that's true dope. that's a dope picture you got there what's going on in that picture brother yeah yeah, yeah. I, I, you know I, i'm just going through some things i had to throw that up so this is um as you see on the top it says annual pilgrimage of the narragansett um pardon me to south county and if you read down at the bottom right early arrivals pardon me, at Indian Church in Charlestown, in Charlestown. 
um, yeah, can I get myself a screen? There we go. Every year, um, scores of descendants of Narragansett Indians from Rhode Island and Connecticut hold an August meeting consisting mainly of religious ceremonies followed by a social gathering and outdoor lunch. The photograph was taken at the recent um, gathering in South County. And I mean, you see the sister right here. <laughs> it's like, you know what I mean? You see us here. You see our people here. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so, you know, again, you know, we're so far removed from those times that we just don't have a the right perception on how we got to where we are now. You know, and um, that's what I was going to mention. Something I wanted to give you credit and um, Kerry Davis, both of y'all guys credit for something. One thing Kerry Davis always said, and this is really was the mantra that I took, and this got me as far as I needed to get, uh, it helped me get further in my geneal genealogical research. Um, and I'm sure you would co-sign this, which is to just talk to your people, talk to your family. You know what I'm saying? And it speaks to what you said, like repair the, the situations at home. You know, if you got, you know, family, you know, some some families is, you know, you really, you never want to look at them as too far gone, but they're like very far gone, okay? I don't want to say too far gone because you always hope they could come back. But some people are very far gone and, you know, maybe it's just like beating your head against a wall with them. But there's some people who it's good to, you know, try to, you know, just because this person didn't invite you to Thanksgiving like two years ago, or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like, that doesn't mean you can't reconnect and talk to this person and try to come together, especially on your, your own family lineage. That's going to benefit beyond you and that person. You know what I'm saying? Um, so that's one thing that stuck with me. And the thing that you had said a while back, I caught you mentioning it, which was, you know, even though if you're not caught up in religion and stuff, but you have your elders and they are. Um, that, you know, why not connect with them or help them? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, if you had to spend a day or two in the church service that you might not want to be at, you know what I'm saying? You go and do it, you know what I'm saying? So that you can reconnect with your elders. And that was something that I really took to heart. You know, I have an older aunt, um, an elder aunt, she's, you know, 87 now. And, you know, I took that, I took that on as, um, a responsibility and I had, you know, been taken to, you know, church service every other Sunday or so when I had the chance. And, you know, we just had some great conversations along the way. She'd just be so happy to do it. You know what I'm saying? Um, and at the same time, you know, the, the the church themselves, they do have answers for a lot of questions that we have. You know what I'm saying? Um, they, they have their own histories and stories that go back. So then you could cross reference that with the actual, um, with the information that's written in some of these books and stuff like that. And you can really get an idea of exactly who your people were um, sometimes by dealing with those things that you might not be so comfortable with, um, you know what I'm saying? And reconnecting with family members that you might not connect with it or in a way that you might not connect with, them, you know? That's a fact. Now, um, and also, you know, for the ones that still you find all this information and they still want to cling to whatever it is they want to cling to with no proof and shit, they still related to you. Like, yeah. I, it's really nothing. None of my cousins can tell me. We got the same fucking grandmas. <laughs> we got the same grandparents. So if they were Indian, then that makes our parents Indian. And what does that make us? It's the same shit. So sometimes, again, go back to the church and stuff like that. Use the Bible to tell them the truth about who they are. Mm -hmm. Use the Bible. It tells you, honor thy mother and thy, forth and thy fathers. And make comparisons. Look at what people have not done that. Everybody else in the world, uh, you know, proudly proclaims their nationality and who they are and where they're from. And think about it. Even down in the Caribbean, they have national pride. They have national pride, even though they, you know, so there's, there's, there's always going to be that little tinge of disconnect because they can probably say that they are Jamaican or they are Antiguan, right? We're kind of over here. You can just say you from New York, really. You really didn't take it that seriously. Now that you know New York is a country, now maybe you can have some pride in, in exactly where you're from. It can be the same thing. You can be uh, in, uh, be a nationalist as well here in the Americas, you know, and taking pride in that shit. Taking pride in it is is where 
you know, people going to start to, 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 to take you seriously, you know, not going to be able to take a, take a stick to you. Um, you know, your ideologies, uh, because it's tangible, it's actual proof, proven mm -hmm. fact, it's mm -hmm. proven fact. These pilgrims know exactly what it is we're talking about. And a lot of them are unable to articulate it. They too have been lied to as well. While they was teaching our people to call themselves everything but uh, uh, the Indians that they were, you know they were teaching their white children to tell themselves that they were free, white, and 21. And that was their excuse to do whatever it is that they felt that they wanted to do. Free, white, and 21. Why would they have to be told that they were free? Why would they have to be reminded they were white hmm. and of the age of majority, which at the time was 21? Meanwhile, we're saying we Indian, but they kept calling us black. Mm -hmm. So uh, you got a, a, a few people in the chat. I'd like to do a couple of phone calls, but I can't have it if y'all going to be all lengthy and windy and long winded. <laughs> You know, keep on the phone for 12 minutes and all, you know, we can't do that tonight. I want to open up the phone lines in case anybody would like to speak to Brother Damon, ask some questions. Um, definitely check out his uh, Facebook page. He's got uh, tons and tons and tons of information on there. He's got excellent pictures, not just one or two. I'm talking 27 to 30. Um, he lists all of his sources, the primary sources and everything, so you can get right to it. A lot of this information, if it doesn't make sense to you now, maybe you should store it because once you get a little further um, in your studies, this book will provide these, some of these sources will provide greater details to whatever it is that you may be stuck at. So if you're having these instances where you're stuck on one ancestor, go to another, yeah. go to another. You don't have to stay stuck on that one person. Uh, it'll frustrate you. It'll discourage you. Move on. Go to the what's called the collateral lines. The collateral lines are the uncles, brothers, cousins. Look and see who they married. Look and see where they lived. Were they up the block? Or did they live across the street? Were they on the same road as your folks? What were their migration patterns? Did they move to another town when the Smith family moved as well? Like those are going to be your clues. It's also going to be uh, the, the art of deduction. And the process of elimination. It's not always going to be, um, you know, flat out in your face. Oh, here's a paper saying that they're this, they're that. Yeah. And keep in mind, you're also not going to be able to find one tribe because your families were intermixed with four or five different nations. Yeah. So then you'll have the burden of, well, do I choose whether or not I'm a Choctaw or do I choose whether or not I'm a Chickasaw or am I Seminole? Or am... Then there'll be that. Don't let those be the, the, the stoppers or the things that, you know, um, prohibit you from going further. I agree. I agree. I mean, I think what you said is true. You know, um, people have to open up. They really have to open up their mind when they're doing this. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, like you said, you might see a you might see a, a person on your in a in lining up in your genealogy, and you see this person listed as white, and you know you might go to yourself, hey, no, look at you, look at yourself, and say, oh no, I don't have you know this person couldn't be white and be you know my ancestor. But again, these terms are so tenuous; these terms are so arbitrary. So, what you like again? I I have an ancestor who was in um, Charleston, he was, um, this is from my kid, kid line. And he, um, basically while they were, while they were in Charleston, they were all listed as mulatto at one time. One of the, one of the brothers went to live in Queens, right? They got to Queens and they were listed as white when they got to Queens. Um, and then their other brother stayed in Charleston and he was listed as black. You know what I'm saying? So again, it's like you have to be able to really, really open up your mind because what happens is, see, ultimately what happens is, is this is about your your own perception. It, 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 a lot of it comes down to your perception of yourself, I, I, I honestly believe, because generally what happens is, and because of the law, like the laws that I um, exhibited up there, is that you have people <coughs> who now, you know, identify 
or would would before identify as, as white, Caucasian, or whatever, they feel comfortable about finding a, an ancestor who was born in Virginia, who was, you know, they they have records that say that. And because the record says that they're white, they they feel comfortable to say that this person, this is how they mask their Indian identity. And again, it could be the case. I'm not saying that's, that wouldn't be the case, but they just have a comfort level to do that. And our folks generally don't have that comfort level. Um, sometimes that comes from within, sometimes that comes from, from outside. But I believe that you know you have to have, just have that open mind um, to know that these terms are very fluid, that they can change from year to year in the same place, from you know what I'm saying, from year to year in a different location. You know what I'm saying? Um, but your relatives are your relatives. You know what I'm saying? And if you find that these are you know your relatives, you can't deny them. You know what I'm saying? What it is is that you have to do the due diligence to really, really. Um, find to find where their place was in the narrative that was really going on at that at that time, which I guess that might be the hardest part because there's so many things that are written about our people. Um, again, I think what what was helpful to me was actually interacting with people who identified as so-called Native Americans. Um, any of the, any people that might be federally recognized or even state recognized, you know? So I've been by the Catawba Reservation. I've been by um, by the Lumbee Tribal Grounds. I've been in both of those towns. I've seen the people around. Um, and I think when you get in that proximity, sometimes that allows you to look at people face to face and not as just like a caricature. You know what I'm saying? I think that's the problem. You know, everybody, and I think that was the goal is to make everybody be a caricature of themselves so that now you know you really can't you can't see yourself as a real person or see the the American Indian even as a real person you know what i'm saying um yeah i think that was something that was going on you know absolutely well, we could open up the phone lines and take a, a few phone calls 4807442636 Call up uh, if you have a question for Brother Damon Taylor or myself. That's 480-744-2636. Phone lines are open. So, you know, uh, Brother, I just want to say thank you so much for coming through. I really, really appreciate you. Um, Damon, can you put the Facebook page link in the chat so they can check out some of your pieces that you've put together? Um, yeah, right now. Yeah. That. Yes. Um. They're, we're doing that right now. Okay. We have our phone call, and we got Michigan. Uh. Let me see. Sorry about that. Got Michigan on the phone. Let me retrieve that call. I, I kind of blew that one. Okay. Now we got Hawaii. One moment. Cool. Halito. Halito. Oh yes, yes. How are you? You're on the air. Yes, okay. how are you? Uh, I'm very impressed uh, with the brother. He was he dropped some great knowledge. I'm gonna keep this very quick and short. Love you, Phoenix Moon. You've been excellent. Thumbs up. Thank you, you know, so much. Um, let me apologize right off the top of uh, infuriating with this question, but I only did one chat, so here it is. <laughs> how would you say that the American Indian intersects with the Hebrews that came over and the Hebrew Israelites? That's my question. Um, well, I'll, I'll, I can answer that first and then turn it over to Brother Damon. Um, as far as I'm concerned, there is really no proof. I'm really kind of biased and not the person to ask, considering that I found out that King James and those tutors and stewards are my bloodline relatives, knowing the interaction um, that they've had with the Palatine Indians, um, I, I really don't look at it the same. I really don't look at it from the same perspective. So let me, um, and and this is coming from me being uh, what I thought was a former Israelite and how I was able to uh, ascertain the fact that I really did not fit in with that group of people for various reasons, um, particularly the suppression of the woman's voice. 
um, and some of those subservient ways that just aren't conducive, they may have a peaceful household, but not a well-protected one. So um, a lot of that stuff, I couldn't really deal with it because it conflicted with practical yeah. information. I will say that. Now, I did learn a lot. I learned a lot about the law through the Bible. But for those reasons, I'm a little biased. Brother Damon, you want to answer that? You want to get to that um, question? I mean, I, I, I don't really have any information to confirm. So I kind of stand where you stand that, you know, I don't you know, I can't prove that. So I don't necessarily believe it. Um, unfortunately. You know, I had a bad experience with a family member who was very um, heavy into into Hebrew Israelite um, inf information, and to me, she was just so close-minded and so stuck on using the Bible as her source of information um, for our, for our lineages. But I feel like that's a I feel that's problematic because you can't even use the Bible to confirm the lineage of people that's in the Bible. So. You know, there was just so many things that we had, um, you know, we had so many heated debate. No, I won't say heated because, you know, it's my aunt and, you know, I wasn't being heated with her, but it was frustrating <laughs> debates that I was having because I was just trying to get her to look at things outside of the Bible. So, I mean, I can't really speak to, to any of the teachings um, because I really haven't gotten familiar with but so much. And I'll be honest, I wanted to. But in my dialogues with, with my aunt at that time, it was just so confusing. And she really didn't want to ground anything she was talking about on anything that was tangible, something that I could go beyond the Bible and look it up, look up the information um, outside of that source. Um, and it just got frustrating. So I, I'll be honest, I'm, I'm probably not the one to really, the best person to respond to that as well. I'm sorry, you know? Right, right. And and that's just, you know, um, at any point, anything that takes your mind off of grandma and the practical, tangible things that you can actually prove, I think that's 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 something we should we're supposed to stay away from. Now, if that is your belief system, you look at any state constitution, you look at the United States Constitution, um, everybody has their right to religious freedom. So whatever it is that you do in your own personal time. That's your business. That's fine. That's completely your prerogative. But that any is with your nation business, your statehood, your absolute well-being in the here and now. I think that's some shit you need to toss to the side until uh, an appropriate time. It's never going to be the right time to be sidetracked by what it is that you believe versus what it is that is absolutely going to affect you here and now. Right. Because um, mm -hmm. it still forces you to think that somebody else is going to come and do the work for you, that if you just be docile and subservient and be a good slave and obey your master, that these great things are going to happen for you. That's bullshit. None of it's worked in the last. How long has this book been here invading the crevices of the world? Not just America. This is the number one book in the entire globe. Second, uh, you know, and the next would probably be the Quran. And they have been used to control the masses on a scale that that it, it is, is beyond imaginable. Right. So these are the things that have value. But what value do they have in a practical sense? I think that's what people need to deal with, not the dogmatic approach. When it tells you, Paul says, and I think it's Romans 8, 11, let, yes, let a man mortify the deeds of his body. He cannot see the kingdom of heaven. When you look in the legal dictionary, hell is prison or jail or slavery. So heaven has got to be what? The opposite, freedom, right? So when it tells you, Paul is telling you to mortify the deeds of your body. If this was 50,000 years ago, what is the deed of your body? It's your birth certificate. So there's some coded information in there, right? That a lot of people are not looking at. Maybe I interpret it a little different when Nicodemus and Jesus are having a conversation and he says, well, how can a man who's already born be born again? Right. And that to me was controlling your straw. In my mind, I just think that the the uh, in the book that's written about Jesus being the transmitting utility for you to get to freedom. Uh, your straw man is the transmitting utility to get through the natural person. Or the natural entity, you see? So that's that's how I would look at it. I have to make practical sense out of it. 
Um, and when it talks about surety and bonds, that pretty much explains slavery to me. It didn't make me angry at white people. When they're talking about surety and bonds and, and, and they have these Bible quotes that say, let your yes be your yes and your no be your no. Don't swear under anything under the sun, but yet people do it all the time. So when I see an Israelite, you know, be so staunch and stuff like that, but then when they go in the courtroom and they tell you, raise your right hand and you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth, I never see any of them object to that. <laughs> when they've been ordered or commanded through the same book that they value to tell you, don't swear on anything under the sun. I don't care what it is. So, you know, again, going back to being able to reach people on their levels, uh, it's not to tear anybody down <clears throat> or anything like that. But if there's no practicality in it, it's probably not useful. Maybe save it for another time. But if the, you can't, everybody in, in the book of Matthew, in the beginning of Matthew, they knew who all of the men in Jesus' life was from down for Jesse to, to Adam all the way back, right? Yeah. Why yeah. isn't it important for you to know your genealogy? The and then <laughs> I think in uh, the book of Titus where, you know, it's like, okay, well, don't worry about genealogy because you were this and you were that. Can you really rely on that? And now here we are where genealogy is the tool that's going to bring us up out of oppression. Doesn't that mean it's always been the tool that would have brought us out of oppression had we listened mm -hmm. and not taken on these different ideologies? <laughs> no. But what you just said about the genealogy, like how the Bible actually applies genealogy is so true. Because you just made me remember like when I first really sat down and tried to just read the Bible like, you know, page for page and read it on my own. And I got like dizzy reading like, you know, such and such begot and such and such begot and begot. And it was like on and on and on, you know what I'm saying? So at the same time, it's like, you know, how could you dismiss that if you are, you know, following any of these religious um, edicts, especially the Bible, when it literally goes like that line for line, um, telling, you know, trying to list the genealogy, list the lineage um, for individuals in the book, you know? Um, so I think you can't discount that, you know? That's right. That's right. You know, so again, like, it's like I said, it's not to, um, not to shit on anybody, man. We've all, I've been there, you know, I, I'm going to tell you the truth. I really kind of wanted to fight. I, I, they would call me, uh, a broken rib. I, and it took me a minute to realize that they were talking about me. Right. <laughs> I, didn't, I had some questions. especially in, and you know, um, regards to like the corn and, and 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 certain things like that, and I'd ask about the corn, and they would just, oh, sister, don't worry about the corn, and just try to marry me off. You know, I would always have these inbox husbands and shit like that. And <laughs> then when I start asking questions, I was no longer I was a broken rib. I was no longer the 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 the, the man's rib that they needed. And just the um, I forget it was another name that they they had for me before I realized that they was talking <laughs> about me. You know. And I was just like, oh, well, I, I couldn't do the bootlicker thing. I won't do it for the pilgrim. I damn sure ain't going to do it for no male that's disrespecting me. You understand what I'm saying? Um, and, and, and there were still some things that I couldn't get my head around. Why are they still oppressed? Okay, wait a minute. You talking all this shit, death to these white people, this, that, and the third. But yet you still go to work for them. And you're real nice to Bob when you get to work in the morning. You're not sitting there throwing those scriptures down his throat. And shit like that. You know what I'm saying? But I was subject to being called a broken rib or Eve run wild and all this other kind of crazy shit, you know, just to avoid asking some of these tangible questions and shit. And I guess it was kind of just, you know, too much. So I realized where I didn't fit in and I, I'm not the one to try and stuff a square peg in a round hole and shit. If it don't fit, I'm getting the hell from around. You know, I, I'm not one of those people that got to just you know, be all comfortable everywhere at the same time. But I damn sure ain't going nowhere where I ain't welcome. Where I can't be myself, it's not the place for me. If I got to pretend to be some other shit, that's not the place I need to be at. And that, that's just it. I'm too old for that shit. Well, I ain't got no to impress no f Um, At 44, you pretty much are who you are. You know what I'm saying? There's always going to be some room for change and shit, but all of that um, you know, just trying to fit in shit. I'm just not going to do it. I, it ain't, it ain't worth me doing it. You're going to get found out. You'll get caught and, and, and it won't be pretty being that, you know, getting that type of fucking exposure. That's true. 
<laughs> That's true. I um, just missed the call. Oh, go ahead, brother. Let me uh try and get this other call okay. back. Well, you know, I was just gonna kind of go into with the religion again, like you know, just how I mentioned, you know, I was um, you know, willing to take my my grandmother, I mean, my grand aunt to church and do those things. And you know, at the at the same time, I appreciate seeing us um still display our culture. You know what I'm saying? Because it, it's 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 a small church, it's a family church as well. So you know, it's um you know very very small and very traditional. Um, so you know, you get to see a lot of things that you can really apply to our culture. But um, I ultimately, and this is through me doing research, you know, and this is why I put this up here, if anybody can see as well. Um, if you're not familiar with the Society for the Propagation of the Gospel in Foreign Parts, okay? Um, this is something that me, myself, I just recently got familiar with myself, but I always looked at the religion as just another form of propaganda um also you know that was the way that they softened us up in my opinion that's really the, if you ask me that's the really the way that they were able to really gain our trust and um you know get that proximity to us was through these religions so sometimes you know i think you know the, some of the belief that we might have even if it came from an elder even if it came from from elder generations, you can't discount that they may have just been um, indoctrinated in that into that by any of these societies. Because this is just one society. Of course, there was numerous of other ones. You know, you had the, the Catholic Church themselves. Um, you know, the Methodists, the Presbyterians, um, all these people who literally these are like some of the first inhabitants in some of our towns. You know, um, me, my folks are from, you know, on, on my dad's side particularly, they're from Florence, Darlington, um, Sumter area, um, Lee County, you know, which just was only created in the, you know, early 1900s. So in a lot of these towns, like a particular place like Jeff Jeffrey's Creek, if you look in the statutes, you'll find that the first town that was established there was a town that was or like should I say a company, a corporation that was established by the um Methodist Church, if i if I'm not mistaken. Um, but this is in Jeff this is in Jeffrey's Jeffrey's Creek, um, South Carolina, um, within like the now Florence County, it used to be like Marion County area. Um, and that's what you find that they would root themselves with the church and present themselves, of course, as more, you know, as godly, as friendly, and all of these things, and we would soften ourselves up to them, and, you know, it's like everybody's probably heard that, um, that kind of little, <coughs> that little um, kind of saying that they say, which is that they gave the, um, they gave the people the Bible, and they went, bent their head to pray when they got up, they lost the land, you know what I mean? I'm paraphrasing, but Ultimately, that's why I feel like, you know, it's okay to have your, your faith, your belief. You know, I would never tell a person not to, especially if it's helping them get by in their day to day. Hey, whatever works for you. But I think that you have to make a distinction between that and your actual lineage, that and um, your actual culture, you know, things like that, you know, because they, they're not always intertwined like that. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes you got to be able to read between the lines and I guess see the uh, forest for the trees, you know? That's right. Okay, so we got a, a caller from Philly, 215. 215, you are on the line. Thank you so much for calling. Peace, peace, peace. Peace. Peace, Graham, and you guys are doing an excellent job tonight. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. So I had, a, I had a question for the both of you guys. Um, this is our version of you, by the way. Um, so in the genealogy, I've found, that I've found a lot of uh, other pale faces occasions that have the same names as my ancestors and not just the mother and father, but I'm, I'm finding that same lineage, uh, that same naming convention with children, and they may be a county over the year off. Is that something that you've seen amongst the states um, 
Terrell, because I've only looked up Georgia, and I'm talking about Terrell County, Lee County, Macon County. Uh, I've seen it, this this trend as I've done my genealogy. Is that something that you might be able to speak on for the people as they do their genealogy and finding the correct records? Oh, uh, Damon, you want to answer that? Um, Thank you. Yeah, I, I'll start because actually that's something that just happened with me recently. Um, I was dealing with um, my Thomas line and they they were coming out of like Richland County, Columbia, um, Dorchester, and eventually migrated going up into like Sumter County and um, those areas like that. But what I, um, what I noticed was that, I guess what I had to come to a realization was, was that there were a lot of counties or states below, especially below Virginia, like you mentioned, um, that there was a lot more freedom for our people. So what, you know, what is called miscegenation, miscegenation, miscegenation oh man, I'm probably ter tearing that word up, miscegen miscegenation, right? Uh, did I say it right? <laughs> um, was, was, was termed that, that was going on a lot more frequently in a lot of places that people might not think that was the case. So, you know, you have places like Richland County um, in Columbia where this was the case. Um, so I was trying to find it because, you know, I just, um, let me see, I can find it real quick. Give me just one second. So this, this post I had put within, this was some of these Thomas ancestors. So I had put them next to this individual named Pap Singleton. Um, he's from Tennessee. He's responsible for um, the migration to Kansas and the people they call the exo exodusters. That's what they were um, called. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. If you can see right here. So what I mentioned in this post was that, you know, these three men have similar phenotypes, but only one is being classified as colored Negro African-American. Now, why is that? Um, so again, if you go into this individual right here, Pap Singleton, again, he's the individual who's identified as Negro. Um, his ancestor is, um, they, they basically say like he's like the son of a slave and his master, something like that. Um, that's how the narrative goes. And because of that, then he's labeled, he's black. Now, again, this individual here, now, of course, I, you know, he don't have exactly the same hair texture, right? And this is, you know, this is this is what's crazy that, you know, you have to, you know, that that you get into a situation where you're um, dissecting people so much. But again, this is, unfortunately, this is the world we live in based off of this racial classification system. So you take a person like him and he has similar features, very similar. They, they remind me of each other right here. And his hair here, is like his hair. Now this is his son, okay? And, and again, if I show you other pictures of other families, you'll see how the features can vary all through an entire line. So again, those terms, when you deal with people being labeled as white, um, pale, and you know, you can't take it for granted that they were like the Scandinavian type you know what I'm saying, or the Finnish type, things that you might be expecting. You know, they could be Scottish or Scotch-Irish, as they was calling them, and mixed with generation and maybe had like, you know, two or three lines that were indigenous American. So they'll, they'll have, you know, a certain look that might be classified in some cases as white. But again, this would be arbitrary. It would depend on where they would go, you know? Um, so like here again, you got family members and, you know, does everybody have the same exact features? No, right? So I think I think you just have to have an open mind when it comes to that. But I definitely, you know, I like to hear what Phoenix have to say. Add on to Absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I definitely don't get caught up in those classifications. Let me just show y'all, particularly, this is uh, John Henry Clark. This happens uh, so often. This happens so often with our people. So this is Dr. John Henry Clark, born in 1915 in Milltown, um, Chambers County, Alabama. All right, so this is him when he was five years old. Um, 
And it has, of course, his father, Jesse Clark uh, Beulah, his mother's name, Beulah, also uh, Elizabeth. Uh, okay, so these are his siblings. Now, what? look what happens when you open up the record. When you look at that, don't get caught up in just what these cards right here say, where it says has his race listed as black. Um, because when you open up the actual document, look here, it has him listed as mulatto. His parents listed as mulatto. The sister, older sister listed as mulatto. Um, and they're only four years apart. But why would John and the other sister, Jesse, uh, be considered black? <laughs> and then the baby female, uh, the last child, the younger child here, um, would she be considered black when they have the exact same parents? You see? Okay, so here they are. Now, this is um, the 1920 Alabama census, uh, enumeration district 17 for anybody else that wants to, to view. And they are starting at line 28. Okay, and this is, um, if you look here on the side, um, it tells you they lived on uh, Milltown Road, uh, Milltown Roanoke Road, okay? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so now you have his parents, uh, his father here, they went to the apartment, father listed as mulatto, the mother listed as mulatto, and the older sister listed as mulatto. Now, when you look at the law of Alabama, anybody listed as mulatto is of American Indian descent. That's what the law in Alabama said. So. Um, yeah, he wasn't very forthcoming about uh, <laughs> his, his ancestry. This is this might have started uh, Phoenix Moon's whole controversial controversial career. I had posted that uh, a couple years back, and I have been harassed by the five dollar <laughs> Native Americans and the Pan Africans ever since. The rest is kind of fucking history. When I I talked about John Henry Clark. Uh, his ancestry and his grandparents being of Choctaw and Chickasaw descent, and niggas goddamn lost their mind. Uh, so then, you know that, uh, and that that required um, some more detail showing how he hated being in the South. He hated the country. He, uh, you know, joined. Um, he went up to New York City and started hanging around the likes of who? What was going on in New York City besides the Harlem Renaissance? So, you know, you got this country boy and he down there seeing Bumpy Johnson and mm -hmm. and, and, and all those people with their fancy suits and shit on. Right. Mm -hmm. And here he is, you know, with the maybe the, the, the country country garments on with the paper boy hat and shit like that. And he wanted a slice of that pie. So to avoid the sharecropper blues or whatever it was that Dr. John Henry Clark was not, uh, he wasn't, he wasn't satisfied with that kind of life. Mm -hmm. He went to New York and, you know, got with Arthur Schomburg, Arturo mm -hmm. Schomburg, um, whose mother is also an American Indian, but he has a father of German descent. Um, Dr. John Henry Clark, I don't know how he became a doctor. The man never even finished high school. He dropped out of school in the eighth grade. So most of, um, you know, all of his teaching tenure was based off of honorary degrees, mm -hmm. not because he actually did that. I don't know if that should have been a, a red flag to anyone because uh, they kind of skipped it over, but let them tell it when it comes to time to, for us to talk this information, they look at us crazy because we don't have the don't degree. Have degrees. <laughs> oh, I've heard it so many times, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, uh, I'll, again, there's going to be instances where you will see uh, one of your great grandparents listed as white, especially in those first 1790 censuses. And even in those muster rolls, you'll have them. You'll see that they're listed there as white. Uh, they, they have uh, columns where they were supposed to say, uh, just express their complexion and race was not necessary. And they would still write in shit like a light complected African. What the fuck is a light complected African? Um, you know, just little things like that. So I definitely wouldn't get caught up on that. So if you find, and again, in certain territories, everyone's seen the picture of Sarah Rector and yeah. she was probably two shades darker than me, but she was considered white in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. So you know, yeah, I think I, I think a lot of I think a lot of these places too. Some of these um these counties and the and the and the census directors or not the directors, but these counties. I think they were trying to keep their numbers up as well because since you know they weren't supposed to tax um and they couldn't get enough representatives based off of their quote unquote white population. I think they sometimes that was the case too. You know, this is just right. 
maybe an assumption, but it's like, it just makes sense. You know what I mean? Because something that I noticed, um, man, I wish I could, I, I can't find the quote right away, but I can, I can pretty much off the top it. But it basically something that I found where it was talking about how the population or e e anybody who follows just the history and they'll tell you, okay, after the, um, you know, after the civil war, the Negro population like doubled and, you know, tripled like in, in the South, right? <laughs> Which some people take that as what? Like these people migrated there all of a sudden. Um, why why were there so few um, Euro quote unquote Europeans or, or, or white people in these, in these towns? Um, yet you go back in these censuses and you'll see them, you know, all these names listed in small groups of colored people there. And even the slave numbers don't match up to how many people ultimately were there. So there's just a lot of people that were either unaccounted for or miscounted, if you ask me. Um, I think that was the case. I think that happened a lot more often than people, you know, um, actually know about, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, did you have another question, Aboriginal Leo? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I, it's all good. Um, I do have a follow-up question to that. Okay. Um, my follow-up question to that would be, um, I completely understand everything that, you know, the both of you are saying. Um, my thoughts, and I'm not sure if my thoughts are on point or not, but my thoughts are because from what I've seen is, you know, I, I've seen the, the changes in race. Um, there was a land grab going on, especially in that area around the time that I'm speaking of. Do you think that uh, for myself and those that are listening, um, that that's something to take into consideration? That they were changing their names to our ancestors in order to grab land? Oh yeah, uh, yeah. I definitely agree with that. <laughs> you're 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 right on with that. <laughs> I, I would definitely agree. Right on with that. They definitely had to. Um, I would say specifically with um some <clears throat> of the dog world application, and the reason why I would say that is for one, you see with those the uh, their descendants now, they look very European. A lot of mm -hmm. them look very European. Um, and 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 they have completely lightened up completely lightened up but this is one thing that I, I was i was always aware of and conscious of there is no way in high hell that a german woman would come over here and be named beulah may jones <laughs> jackson so to me that was a context clue that they've been stealing our family shit mm -hmm. and of course they had every opportunity to do so if they have us looking across the atlantic they was over here stealing from the cookie jar. We would be none the wiser. We're just now getting it together and snapping out of the damn psychosis that we've been in now. Um, and there was uh, some scrub made a video um, and he 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 jacked my shit. Uh, and I was making a point about some of the Pahawatan Indians. And I was like, listen, no, none of these people look like me. Which means that the burden of proof is going to be on these white people that have been pretending to be these crying eyed Cody Indians mm -hmm. for the last 30 something years, right? Because this is since the 70s when they started getting federally recognized. Now here it is, you have all these, uh, these, these Caucasian looking people that have now claimed the ancestry that we've abandoned by, you know, talking about Ali Bumbaya, right? right? So yeah. now the burden of proof is going to be how can they maintain this motherfucking lie when they're not related to us? There's no way they could be related to our ancestors and not be related to us. The jig is up. Mm -hmm. Jig is up. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Not a problem. Thank you Thank so you much. For Peace and love. Peace and love. Respect. Peace. So yeah, you know, um, 
definitely they're gonna have to answer some questions. Maybe they'll just, I mean, I don't even know how that shit gonna work for them. Maybe they just gonna tuck their head in the sand and try and gracefully bow out and you know renew their passports and get ready to head on back to Europe with their <laughs> head on low in shame because they have been fucking stealing from us. The jig is up. The jig is up. If you now, ask me, it look like it look like they're trying to get more of the um like more Europeans to come over here, you know what I'm saying? Like may have a whole nother massive wave of migration. You know what I'm That's saying? Right. Everybody, fo everybody focus on the Im immigrants is gonna cross um a border and a wall. But <laughs> trust me, the most immigrants do not get here like that. And trust me, I know for a fact. So you know what I'm saying? Like if that's if that's the way that people are worried about immigrants coming here, then people yeah. that are gonna, you know, take their jobs or their place or anything. And they're looking in the wrong direction, you know what I'm saying? They need to actually start looking um into these airports and visas and things like that, you know what I'm saying? That's how people get here. So I, if you ask me, I think they're trying to divert our attention, have us focusing on other people who actually do have some, you know, more connection to us, you know what I'm saying? Even if they don't want to admit it or accept it and ignore the waves of you know east indians that'll come here you know what i'm saying places like south carolina they got whole enclave enclaves out here you get what i'm saying um um british people they having total upheaval in their in their country you think they're not coming here you know what i'm saying why why are they building all all these in different supermarkets that are british owned you get what i'm saying That's so it's right. like people not paying attention and these are the things that we we don't pay attention to that's right in front of our face and then we get side, um, we just get blindsided <laughs> at the end I of the day. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. Well, um, I let me just before we start wrapping this up, I want everybody to give our beautiful sister and moderator Liz Robinson a big old happy born day shout out. Her birthday's tomorrow. We love you, sister. Thank you so much. Happy born happy, day. Happy birthday to you. Shout out to Sister Liz Robinson. Wanted to give her that birthday shout out. Damon, I am so happy to be able to sit down and kick it with you. Got to have you yep. back again. Yep. Um, I thank you so much for uh, taking my rain check. I had a, a, a week from hell last week. Uh, <laughs> very very uh, less than desirable. Let's just say that. Um, but I'm so glad that you were able to, to pick up where we left off and do this show so we can sit down and kick it with the people. Um, yeah, I definitely appreciate you. And you, you want to have a closing statement and bring us on for the night? Okay. Well, um, again, I would say thank you for having me. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? Always, always willing to do it. You know what I'm saying? Again, you know, um, through us actually um, building and going through a lot of them battles, shoot, we actually found out that we got a connection. You know what I mean? Definitely tell your, tell your pops I said what's up, you know what I'm saying, when you get a chance. You know yes, what I'm saying? Um, and you know what I mean? We, we got... You know, we, we we got so much connection out there. We just got to keep it going. And I, like I said, I, I I'm here. I'm here for you. You anytime you need. You know, me on your platforms. I'm here. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Um, That's mutual, brother. That's absolutely mutual. Thank you. Um, I guess at the end, I guess really all I want to say is that it's just important to really, really do the homework. To really, really look. Uh, look for who your people are because nobody else can tell you who your people are. Your family, they have a lot of keys. There's a lot of resources out there. The information is there. Um, don't, don't be hesitant. Don't be, don't get overwhelmed as well. Um, and again, just reclaim your lineage because again, I guess to take it full circle the way I started, if you notice, you know, that individual um, Mr. Boyd, who is, you know, taking over the black farmers and representing black farmers, he he knows his lineage. And because of that, he's able to to um to kind of play both sides. That's what he's doing, if you ask me. You know, I don't know this individual, you know what I mean? Maybe my judgment is too harsh, but you know, you have a lot of people that's gonna do that to you. And they can only do that to you if you place yourself in these boxes. You know That's right. If you don't place yourself in these boxes, it can't be done to you. And you don't have to always be on the outside looking in. You know what I'm saying? Um, for those who come up and they have, you know, ancestry that's outside of this, um, you know, outside of the Americas, 
please embrace it. Be proud of it. Trust me, I found some, like I said, Scots, Scots Irish, um, different people like that. And, you know, it, it, it's something I definitely have to accept. So, That's you know, right. just, just, just go into it with an open mind. And, um, you know what I mean? Like I said, use all the resources available to you and ask as many questions as you can, um, especially from your family members, because they'll give you so many um, keys and open up so many doors for you that you can't get out of a, out of a book written on your people or something like that. You know, you won't That's get right. as much, as much from that as you'll get from your own people. You know, That's the fact. And even if the words are not as familiar to you still write down what it is that your people say, because you know, what we call a hero in New York and Connecticut, they call it a grinder. Out in Ohio, they call it a torpedo, but we really talking about a hero sandwich or a sub sandwich, right? We all talking about sandwiches, but there might be a different word that they use to express one thing or another. So sometimes, even if it don't make sense to you right away, if you get them elders talking, write that shit down. It's going to be some place in time that it actually shows itself to be the 100% fucking truth. And that's going to be from the people that love you, not the people that are looking to take your shit. No you know doubt. what I'm saying? Um, so I, I just wanted to say thank y'all for, for sticking it out with me. Always beautiful to see y'all, y'all American Indians in this chat, man. I love y'all. Y'all the truth, y'all the realest, and we're gonna bring this home. Um, peace and blessings to all of you. And we are out. Peace a lot, you beautiful ones. Happy birthday, sister Liz. Love you, mamas. Talk to you soon. Peace.